होने में और बहुत कुछ होने में इतना सा फर्क है एक बार सोच के छोड़ देने में और लग के कर दिखा मान लेने में कि जिंदगी ऐसे ही कटेगी और सुबह चार बजे उठ के सोचने में ये अभी तो बस शुरुआत है किसी मैगजीन को हाथ में लेने में और उसी मैगजीन के कवर पेज पे होने में इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वीआईपी सीट में और उसकी पिछली सीट में ये इतना सा ही तो फर्क है वो जिसका मैदान ही खुला आसमान है वही कल जमीन पर तो था पूछोगे तो बताएगा वो पंछी ये एक दायरे में सिमटने में और पूरी दुनिया को दायरा बनाने में बस इतना सा फर्क है इतना कितना है इतना है या इतना है जो नापेगा वो जाने कि जहां धरती और आसमान मिलते नानकुर से दूर अगर मगर शायद से दूर वहां भी दोनों में फर्क बस इतना सा है धरती और सातवें आसमान में फर्क बस इतना सा ये एक अंतर प्रेरणा ये हमारी आपकी हम सब की अंतर प्रेरणा एक कदम एक छलांग एक बाजी एक गहरी सांस और एक ललकार खुली हवाओं में कि हां मैं बना हूं उन फिजाओं के लिए कि हां मैं बना हूं उन ऊंचाइयों के लिए जो ऊंची तो बहुत है पर नामुमकिन भी नहीं क्योंकि मुमकिन और नामुमकिन में बस इतना सा फर्क धूप छाओ में फर्क बस इतना सा तो बस चलिए फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया के साथ ये फर्क मिटा देते हैं फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया ट्वेंटी इयर्स ऑफ आइडियाज थैंक यू सो मच कनिका फॉर प्लेइंग द कॉर्पोरेट वीडियो फ्रेंचाइज इंडिया दैट ट्रूली डिपेक्स the kind of the vision and mission we follow every day good afternoon everyone i archna sharma along with the entire team of franchise india welcome all of you to our webinar series under business support shown you which i this is a platform through which we are providing you the information about different business opportunities and every day we select a unique business opportunity for you so that you understand the end to end business and the franchise model brand is offering to you this is a 45 minute session where first we'll take you through the presentation we'll talk in detail about the brand they're offering and what kind of a value proposition they are creating in market then we'll move to a panel discussion today we have invited under our panel management team of franchise india gorav sir sonia ma'am and venus barak from she's leading frank global under the umbrella of franchise india it's our everyday aim to provide maximum business opportunities to all our investors and the brand which we are representing for each and every investor joining in today is otacos it's an it represents the fnb category it's a successful french fast food chain and they have exceptional growth in international market today we'll be talking about three different model casual dining quesar and food court under this particular brand and we with this introduction may i invite sonia ma'am and Venus to formally host and welcome our international guests joining us today to talk about this brand. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining in today. Please welcome. Thank you, uh, thank you, Archana, uh, and uh, good to be here. Uh, first of all, welcome uh, everyone, our participants, our brand, our teams. uh welcome and thank you so much for giving us uh, this uh, platform and chance to be able to present uh, uh our brand of the day today uh just uh, to quickly to introduce myself and frank global so i'm venus barak uh, i'm the ceo of frank global and at frank global uh we work with international brands from all across the world and help them find franchise partners uh in india bangladesh and the middle east as a priority markets of delivery now today uh, you know i'm very excited to uh, present this uh, brand first of all the category really is a uh, very interesting and hot quick service restaurant and uh, even during the pandemic uh, majority of the large quick service uh, restaurant brands have really uh, done uh, well they have gone through tremendous amount of transformation and there is just uh a uh, 
big demand uh, of good standardized, scalable, quick service restaurant brands. We meet uh, uh, potential investors, potential franchisees uh, every day. We speak to them and, 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 and a lot of them are actually looking for a scalable, standardized, good, uh, quick service restaurant brands. And uh, that's why i uh, very excited to have uh, and to present to you Otakos. Uh, and we, today we have uh, the team of Otakos Otakos joining us from uh, France. We have uh, Peter and Baptiste, uh, who really uh, uh, who, who lead the uh, expansion, uh, both domestic and international, and really sort of has built these uh, built this brand. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, Otakos is, uh, uh, as Anshana mentioned, French fast food. Uh, started in two thousand seven, headquartered uh, in. Uh, uh, in France, and I think what what Otakos has, and when when I first came across the concept, I I just really loved it because it's just a simple uh, a product, but uh, has been developed into uh, uh, such efficient and uh, sort of a great manner that uh, the product is great. Consumers love it. Uh, it's a simple business, uh, and uh, what I really like is that actually in this, uh, unlike couple of other quick service restaurant brands here, you can choose, you can choose your protein, you can choose your uh, uh, fillings, and then kind of have a product which which you want. Uh, so really love it. And uh, I would now uh, uh, welcome Baptiste and Peter to uh, share with us uh, their journey uh, of food tacos and, and what we are proposing to uh, our audience in India. Welcome, Baptiste and Peter, and welcome, Sonia. You want to say something? I would say maybe a welcome to all our friends who have joined in and also our panel members. I think it's a great opportunity. I would uh, rather leave uh, uh, all the questions uh, after we conclude on the presentation. Sure. Uh, best if we can have maybe a formal presentation uh, sure. on the business model. Absolutely. I think we have put something together. Baptiste, Peter, welcome. And uh, I think uh, we would want to uh, want to play some video, or we can immediately get started with the presentation. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. So first of all, thanks a lot for uh, for giving the occasion to attack us uh, having this with me to through the webinar. Um, as already indicated, so it has been an amazing journey for us, uh, growing from one to over three hundred restaurants over the last years, uh, which is a pretty big achievement, especially in a country like uh, like France and, and Belgium. Uh, we'll go through the, the video and the, and the presentation, but maybe just a little heads up on, on what made Otakos this successful over the last years is, is a few things. So first of all, uh, as indicated already by, by Venus, is the product. So the product that we have is a, is a unique product within the QSR uh, industry. So it's actually a new product category that also has been created. So the, the French tacos is, is now basically on, a, on an incredible journey across Europe. Uh, and uh, I'm sure throughout the, the video and the presentation, you'll get a better understanding of all the all the specificities of the of the product. Next to that, maybe some of you already had the chance uh, to uh, to get in contact with Otakos or to see something something through social media. So we have uh, an, an incredible, uh, I would say, almost fan base across Europe. As Otakos is one of those brands that has been digital native since the start. So if we look in, uh, for example, Facebook on Instagram, Instagram but also on, on TikTok, Snapchat, the latest uh, digital platforms and social media. It is something that is part of the DNA of the brand and, and has been one of the key drivers throughout our, our development. And if we look at those social media presence, uh, it's something where we at, at, at stake basically together with other main players uh, in, the, uh, in the QSR industry. So that has been a great support for us. A third element, uh, which is also very important, is the flexibility we have. So if you look at the locations uh, that we have currently in our network, we go from very small locations operating out of food court. We have city center locations. We have shop in shop models. Uh, we are do, going and, and launching uh, a very aggressive uh, plan in terms of, of virtual and ghost kitchens across uh, Germany. Uh, we started our first drive-through location, so we have an extremely wide variety of, of locations. So that made that allows us basically to fit uh, basically any need that somebody might have. Always keeping in mind the payback. Yeah? So if there's one thing that has been crucial throughout this development is is the uh, aggressive payback that we have for uh, for Otakos, allowing our franchisees to grow uh, very quickly. 
And then the other point is the partners. I think being part of the, the QSR, so it's uh, the biggest European platform for QSR business. So within our group, we also operate Burger King, we operate Nordsee, we operate a lot of big brands in Europe, uh, which gives us basically very strong support uh, across all the different areas and departments on the uh, on the European level. Uh, so those are a few uh, elements that, that allow the tacos to have this incredible growth over the last years. Um, I suggest that we start with the, with the video, which should give already a first impression of the, of the brands and its evolution. After that, we'll go into more uh, details and obviously we'll make sure that we have sufficient time for some uh, Q&A uh, right after. Sorry. Yeah, did you get a chance to see the video? Yeah, yes, yes. I think there is no sound, right? In this. Yes, there, there was sound. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's put the presentation. This, this looks great. I love the store design. So the store design basically was a. Um, was the first one we did. We did. Uh, we had an evolution through the through the years, uh, where the, the concept and the architectures uh, changes through the time. And uh, let's go through what is Otakos and what is the what is the product and the concept uh, of it. Sure. Um, you need to, uh, I think, uh, close this window and then start with your presentation. I think so. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. There. Okay, perfect. So basically, um, if we're looking into the history of Botacos, it's a new product, it's a new market. Uh, the, the founders, they start the brand in 2011. Uh, so we start basically 10 years ago, uh, and we start the franchise five years ago. So we grow from 10 to 300 restaurants in five years. We're gonna end the, we are gonna end the, how to say, the years with 300 restaurants. Uh, maybe the key point to remember is that we, uh, Caris Capital and QSRP Group uh, join us uh, between 2017 and 2018, which gave us the opportunity to see wider and to see uh, internationally the development of a, uh, the Otakos brand. Uh, that is why we're here today to, to talk about the, the opportunity to grow uh, overseas. Uh, we're present in uh, five uh, countries at the moment. So France, Belgium, uh, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Germany, and soon to be Italy. Uh, and we are really looking uh, to go into the Middle East, uh, into the Asian country as well, uh, and maybe soon Spain. So here you go, you, can, you may see uh, the development of the different concept of Otakos. So from the beginning to those days, uh, it may develop uh, in the next few years as well, always keeping in mind to, to follow the, the tendency and the, I'd say maybe the, the, the fashion of the, of the time. What said Peter and uh, Venus, which is really important in our business, so this is true for international model, and we make sure it's going to be true as well in the in the Asian one. 
is that we have a, a very important and very interesting return on investment. So the payback, uh, we are looking for payback in less than, uh, than three years. Uh, that allows our, our investor and our franchisees to, to grow faster and further than uh, an older franchise model. What about our vision? Our vision uh, as we said, like we're going uh, to go internationally. That's what we're here today. Uh, we are always trying to keep innovation and creativity at the center of, uh, of our mind. Uh, the product itself is an, is an innovation. Uh, it's a new market, it's a new product. Uh, we are always trying to go further. Uh, to, to give an example, we, we launched the, the balls uh, last week and it's beginning to be a success. So we are always trying to put ourselves uh, in danger and train new stuff uh, before uh, our competitor does. We obviously have a custom training, so it will be adapted for each country and each language. Uh, it is at the moment for German market, it is for Italy, it is for France, for Belgium, etc. Uh, so it is very important to understand the product and the way we, we promote and sell it. Um, high quality standard, of course, and as I told earlier, the, the personal and functional architecture. About the key numbers, as I told, we're gonna, we, we did end the, the 20, 20 years at 2,070 stores, and we're gonna be at 310 restaurants at the year of 2021. So basically we had like an exponential growth. Uh, it's a bit uh, unusual in the, in the franchise model. And the, the key factor success for that was uh, the product itself and uh, the, the low payback, the quick payback of the, of the investment. Here you can see we, it's divided between 2014 friends and maybe 14 Benelux. I'm going to go quick on that and maybe uh, present you the numbers. Uh, so once again, it's the numbers for the, the, the European market, uh, but I think it's good to give you an incentive and maybe something to, uh, to understand the model. So we are looking for, for locations that are 100 square meter minimum. Uh, otherwise, it's difficult to put some, uh, some seating area, but we are also able to go lower, maybe 80, 60 square meter uh, for takeaway or maybe food court version. So that could be an opportunity. Um, the average basket in France is 13 euro. So um, basically it's good and we're trying to make it higher, especially on the kiosk, uh, where we can uh, go up to 19 euro uh, for an average basket. Um, and what is the most important is uh, maybe the, the investment. Uh, we are around um, 300,000 uh, euro, which is a really uh, a compact model where you can build like a restaurant with a 150 square meter with everything inside. So you have the equipment, you have the furniture, uh, you also have like the, the, uh, the entrance fees for the, for, for the franchise. Um, so basically, it's really reasonable, and that's why uh, that's what making us that that's what allows the franchisee to to have a quick pay a quick payback. Uh, so less than three years. We have we have you may not be aware, but the leader on the French market, we're also the leader on the Benelux market, and we are the leader uh, in the Europe market, where it's the only place you have a Otaco's franchise brand. Uh, so basically, we we are we are uh, like putting and uh, driving the, the tacos markets in Europe and in the world. As Peter said as well, this is very important. We have, we are, um, we have more than two million and a half follower. Uh, it's almost a fan base. Uh, so it's mainly on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram and we grow the new, um, I'd say the new, um, uh, the new platforms such as TikTok and Snapchat and etc. Um, I think we are okay for the this this slide and we may go further. So this is the quick payback. I'm not gonna uh, tell about it again. The product itself, which is maybe um, a bit complicated and a bit new uh, for the Asian market, is uh, a tacos. It's completely um, modulable. The customer uh, can uh, do basically whatever he wants. Uh, so you put some 
meat, you put uh, some sauce, you put some addings and top of and toppings if you want so. Uh, and basically that's kind of the model when you can go grow your average basket. Uh, and then we add some French fries and some cheese sauce, which is uh, basically our secret recipe uh, that makes uh, our brand famous. Uh, so basically that's, uh, that's the tacos. The, in France and uh, Belgium, the starting price is around six euro for one meat, seven for two, nine for three. Uh, and the idea of the, the business model is to sell toppings uh, to grow the, the, the average basket. Uh, there is a high incidence of drinks. So basically 95% of the customer are taking also drinks, we are taking other tacos. And we are launching, as I said before, uh, some new, um, some extra uh, products to keep selling uh, during uh, all the day. Uh, such as uh, a sweet, a sweet side with uh, ice cream, uh, shake, and uh, and even a sweet otakos. Uh, and basically, apart from that, we also sell finger food, such as our tenders, which are really, uh, um, really famous in uh, in the country, nuggets, jalapenos, etc. So that's all part of the model, and uh, and we're trying to improve it uh, day by day. So here, basically, is a mini board. Uh, it's in French, but you basically can understand how it, how it works. So basically, you choose your size with how many meats you want. You add the, uh, the sauce, you add the toppings, and you can even put some toppings once the tacos is closed and put cheese outside that it's melting. Um, you have some visual to give you an idea. This is a sweet version which is representing between five and 10% of our business model. And about the brand and design, yes. Yeah, so we, we have a strong presence in the social network and uh, basically our main, um, our main uh, customers are the one between 12 and 25 years old. Uh, they're hungry for food. They're looking for nice place and uh, how to say Insta Instagramable place when you can take pictures, when you can hang out with, you, with your friends. So really cozy atmosphere uh, that help us bring the customer in. So once again, we're a strong presence on social network, even a TV or radio. Uh, we, it's really important for us to be uh, local. You can make deals with the basket team, with the soccer team. Uh, it's really important for, for the customer to, to have a strong presence. On the operative side, we also have a, a visit with uh, some uh, customer, like the mystery customer. We also have laboratory coming, and of course, you have uh, help from our side. And we are going to visit the uh, the restaurant uh, each month or uh, every two months to make sure everything is okay. About the restaurant itself and the surface, uh, as I told, 100 square meter minimum. Uh, you have the split here, where um, when the restaurant is a uh, uh, fully equipped with the kitchen, the storage, other like uh, offices, lock room and etc. and the restaurant area where the customer can come in. Strong visibility, uh, we are looking for location with strong visibility, like a lot of traffic and uh, maybe the most important stuff is a high um, percentage of young, youngster uh, on the area. About the technical requirement, maybe we'll see, we can see that later, but we need strong electricity, of course grease trap and an extraction for the, for the air. Here you can see the, so the new concept, the latest in, uh, in date. And uh, so here are the, the, the conceptual one, and you can see also some picture here, maybe that are more uh, easy to understand. So we focus on, the, on two things. We focus on the orange color uh, because we had a competitor trying to, to copy our latest, con the, the old concept. So we put, uh, really effort on the on the color. So our color is orange as a, the strong one and black. Uh, it's like the green or red of a McDonald's. And we tried also as well to put an effort in the O of Otakos, uh, like the M of McDonald's. Um, like this is, it's impossible to, to, to copy this concept uh, at the moment. So here you go, uh, the presentation, the, the presentation is done. Maybe, Peter, you want to add something? 
No, I think it, it has been a very good overview of the of the brand and the, and the project so far. So maybe we can uh, give the floor back to uh, to the to the team to go into more details on the on the business case and the, and the financials. Yeah, I agree, and uh, do not hesitate to to ask any question. Sure. Uh, no, this was a great presentation, Baptiste. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it will be very useful for our audience to share uh, the perspective on the unit economics uh, of India and maybe some comparative uh, uh, sort of data. Anshu, uh, you have you have that with you? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, thank you very much, Baptiste, and uh, for your great presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll share another presentation on. India opportunity and as well uh, the financial structure at a unit level and as well for also the master franchise. Uh, so if I can share my screen. So I hope this presentation is uh, now visible to everyone. Yes, you need to do your screen. screen yeah. yeah. Correct. So uh, with that, uh, we'll have two sections in this presentation. One, of course, Hoteco's presentation, what the brand is already shared. Uh, <clears throat> I will straight away jump into India opportunity and then uh, the franchise proposal. Uh, so uh, starting with first, the India opportunity. In terms of, uh, so here, what we've done is we've done, uh, in terms of how we want to present or position this brand in the Indian market. Uh, so this would be uh, very close to what, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming in as a casual dining or a fast casual format, uh, you know, pricing around US dollar eight or, uh, you know, uh, between 600 to 800 rupees uh, price points for two people, right? Or ideally uh, between 300 to 400 rupees for, for a single customer, uh, you know? Then uh, looking at uh, some of the so uh, you know uh, then we have to what we've done is friends for our understanding uh, we have also looked at uh, some of the numbers in the Indian market uh, how these competition players are doing. Uh, so market share by sales. So uh, so this would also give us a fair understanding in terms of how uh, the market is looking like. Okay. Uh, some of the other restaurant expansion by international QSRs in India, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, the global chains like Domino's, Subway, McDonald's, uh, KFC or even Burger King uh, over the last six years period starting 2014 uh, to 2020 you know before uh, the pandemic uh, started uh, so if you look at Domino's uh, in 2014 they were at 726 store count in India and uh, uh, in March 2020 uh, they were at 1335 so which means almost 600 stores added uh, in the six years period uh, similarly, uh, if you look at Subway, they've added uh, close to 200 stores. Uh, then McDonald's, uh, McDonald's added 120 stores. Uh, KFC is added 115. Uh, and Burger King, which actually started in 2014, uh, in 2015, in fact, uh, have added uh, 260 stores over these six years period. So definitely, you know, there is a, a great scope for international chains to uh, uh, roll out uh, stores and many of them have done uh, done that. Uh, Domino's, of course, with the Jubilant Food Work, they don't offer single unit franchise. Uh, Jubilant has done all the stores uh, themselves. Uh, Subway, a wholly owned subsidiary in India, and they do offer multi unit franchise and even single unit franchise. Uh, McDonald's uh, running with uh, two master franchises uh, in the country. Uh, and together, uh, they've added 120 stores uh, over the six years period. Uh, KFC, uh, you know, uh, till 2018-19 was with Devyani International, still with Devyani. Uh, but Yum Brands, the parent company, has also brought in a second master franchise uh, for South and West, uh, which should, 
you know, which should then now uh, over next three to five years, it should ensure faster development. Uh, Burger King with Everstone Capital as a master franchise. They also don't do single unit franchise. All stores are owned by Everstone Capital. They've also come up with an IPO uh, last year. Uh, but overall, 260 stores added uh, in these uh, six years uh, in presence in the country. Right. <clears throat> then we have also what we've done is, uh, you know, just to get an understanding in terms of what is uh, the turnover uh, per store uh, these companies are able to generate uh, and these numbers are uh, you know uh, taken from the companies and also taken from analyst reports so we can definitely rely on these numbers uh, so that's what we've done uh, uh, dominoes would typically do uh, you know uh, uh, so dollar uh, three fifty thousand annual sales and if I look at in INA numbers for our for our investor friends, uh, this is between 20 to 25 lakh rupees per store per month numbers, right? Uh, similarly, Pizza Hut would do 400,000 uh, annual sales, but monthly INA numbers would be uh, between 22 to 24, 25 lakh rupees uh, monthly business. Uh, McDonald's, uh, because they do large format stores, uh, they've been able to hit between 35 to 40 lakhs uh, monthly sales, right? Similarly, Burger King, uh, 30, 30 to 35 lakhs. Uh, Subway uh, uh, has been able to do between 12 to 15 lakh rupees. Some of the better performing stores have been also able to, you know, hit 18 lakh rupees or so numbers. Uh, and last uh, and very important brand, uh, KFC. Uh, they've been able to hit 35 to 40 lakh rupees monthly business, right? Uh, in terms of the EBITDA numbers also, if you see, uh, uh, they've been able to hit between, you know, 15 to 20% uh, as a store EBITDA. So store EBITDA means uh, that's the, uh, uh, you know, monthly uh, profit on the sales is what they've been able to do. So between and you can see most of these stores would would end up doing 15 to 20 percent uh, monthly numbers right so on the sales of uh, say 25 lakh rupees uh, or five lakh rupees monthly profit or we can you know conclude that a 50 lakh rupee annual profit is what these uh, companies are able to generate per store <clears throat> so these numbers are important uh, because on the next section we would be talking about uh, a financial structure that both our calls would look at. And Actually, you want, in, can, can you go back to the presentation? And you want to, you might want to add that I think uh, in quick service restaurant business, uh, the numbers which we are seeing, the beta numbers, are predominantly because they have economies of scale. And and uh, that's that's very important that in quick service restaurant business, unless you have a certain number of restaurant hitting these numbers. Uh, won't be possible. That's why uh, we would have to put together a, a aggressive rollout. Correct? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All of these brands, uh, what they've done is they've also, uh, you know, backed their stores uh, through central commissaries, uh, where a lot of efficiencies uh, are built in the system through the supply chain, uh, and uh, a lot of costs are controlled uh, in terms of uh, their food cost. And as you can see, the cost of material averages, uh, you know, especially for Domino's and Pizza Hut, around 25%. Uh, for McDonald's and Burger King, that cost is around 35%. Uh, and similarly for Subway and KFC also. Right. Uh, so uh, as Venus has rightly mentioned, economies of scale uh, is very important in QSR business. And that's what uh, uh, the master franchise partner for Otaku also uh, should uh, look at uh, achieving in India. So now this section will talk about how we're looking at uh, what is the role that we're looking at for a master franchise. So India go to market uh, strategy. Uh, what we have uh, done is you know we have looked at equal opportunity clusters of minimum twenty five units. Uh, and each cluster to be assigned to one cluster master franchise. Uh, right. 
uh, with certain development obligations. Uh, this would be a 10 year contract. So uh, these are some of the clusters at a state level that we have uh, created. Uh, I believe more importantly, uh, the master fee of $250,000 uh, uh, coming at a $10,000 per store uh, for these 25 stores commitment. Uh, and then subsequently, uh, you continue to pay $10,000 per store as you sign each of these uh, 25 stores over next five years period. Uh, there's also a royalty share that you probably that you pay 50 percent so uh, we've looked at a six percent royalty uh, from each store that you would collect uh, from the sub sub franchisee and continue to pay 50 percent of that uh, to the brand <clears throat> so as uh, Baptist mentioned in the presentation, we're looking at a hundred square meter uh, minimum size for uh, the dining restaurant format, and for the food court, uh, this would be uh, about thirty-five square meter, which means uh, a three fifty uh, square feet sort of a, a food court model. A highly scalable model in terms of you know uh, uh, town centers, suburbs, shopping centers, malls. Uh, corporate locations, uh, you know, even education hubs. And today we see there's a growing opportunity in travel retail also uh, with uh, specifically with metro stations. Uh, like if you are in Delhi, uh, then Putta city center in Gurgaon, uh, Nehru place Epicuria in Delhi. Uh, and similarly, uh, you know, sector 18 location in Noida. So these are, I mean, these are just, you know, few names that I'm mentioning, uh, but there's similarly, there are many other metro locations that we can do. Uh, and that adds to the scalability opportunity. So malls, high streets, uh, travel detail, corporate location like Cyber Hub, uh, Sector 15, Noida, uh, and Delhi also uh, many locations uh, that we can look at from a corporate location point of view, right? Like places like Netaji, Subash Place, uh, could be very interesting. Nehru place, apart from the metro station, there are a few other locations that we can do. So, a uh, highly scalable opportunity. Uh, okay, so unit financial dynamics. Uh, three formats that we're looking at. Uh, casual dining at a 1,500 square feet. Uh, quick service format at a, a 1,000 square feet. Uh, and a food court at a 350 square feet model. Overall investment, uh, so these numbers are in US dollars, uh, 135,000 for the casual line, 100,000 for quick service, uh, 75,000 for food court. Uh, this includes uh, this franchise fee of 20,000, uh, royalty of 6%, marketing fee contribution of 2%, uh, so, you know, given uh, earlier we saw uh, what competition is achieving in terms of their uh, turnovers, uh, similar numbers is what we have also looked at. Not similar, but uh, slightly uh, lower numbers for year one, and then we continue to grow. Uh, ideally, uh, all three formats, we should be able to achieve a break even in under two years. Uh, and given a good mix of these stores, uh, within your 25 stores commitment, uh, overall, uh, as a master franchisee, you should be able to achieve your break even also between two to three years period. Uh, please note, this is a master franchise opportunity, not a multi-unit. So beyond your first couple of stores, you should be able to do sub franchise, uh, bring in other investors, uh, to, uh, get these other, uh, stores in the market, right? So that Anshu, can, to, Anshu, can you help with uh, giving uh, the our audience the Indian uh, equivalent of the overall master franchise investment? I guess that will be useful for them, including the master franchise fee and the let's say the cost of the first two stores. Sure. So uh, uh, that would be. Uh, uh, So two fifty thousand dollars is the master fee, and then you can add uh, 
At first, casual nine format, so which is another uh, 350. So, so that's about 400,000 overall uh, total investment. So that into so you know, ideally uh, between two and a half to three crores investment, uh, including the master fee and first casual nine in setup. So that's two two and a half crore investment in the project. And then, of course, you can continue to do sub franchising, uh, so which adds to you your revenues, the franchise fee that you can collect, uh, six percent royalty, and two percent marketing fee that comes to your books. Of course, fifty percent uh, is what you share with the company uh, as your uh, royalty and marketing fee share. I hope that answers. Maybe. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, in terms of the support now, uh, you know, uh, uh, refine inventory management processes, communication, complete IT solutions that meet OTA code standards, uh, training and development support uh, during uh, pre opening uh, and after opening. And company would also focus specifically on hygiene and HACCP regulations. So would would absolutely bring in uh, global standards on that front also. Uh, we continue to work with you on the menu development, uh, some of the vendors development, as you can see here, uh, design, personalize, and functional architect, uh, training programs for each franchise partner, innovation and creativity in terms of the menu. Uh, so all these uh, we bring in. Uh, at every customer touch point, uh, global standards of servicing is what company would uh, bring in uh, from their running stores in France and other markets. <clears throat> uh, so in terms of our ideal partner profile, uh, existing food service groups, uh, you know, HN investors for multi and master franchise association, individual entrepreneurs for single unit franchise, property owners, existing stores who may want to convert to O tacos is what we would be looking at. So, ideally, from a master franchise opportunity point of view, existing food service groups, uh, large investors is what we would be keen to uh, look at. So, that would be uh, end of. I hope this was helpful and uh, uh, you 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 were able to understand the financial structure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anshul. Uh, Venus, anything else that you would want to uh, add, uh, maybe as a remark uh, to that presentation? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you, Baptiste, Peter, to uh, this was a very good presentation, concise. Uh, I, I think it's very important uh, uh, to sort of uh, share uh, the the sentiment behind this go-to market. Uh, uh, you know, a quick service business uh, is uh, primarily based on supply chain standardization and economies of scale. And uh, uh, old tacos, you you see in the presentation that uh, primarily we would be positioning ourselves or they position themselves against all the big quick service restaurant players. So they are already here. They are, they are the same in, in Europe as well. So what we have, uh, instead of sort of, you know, uh, and this is very important, uh, is that it's a young brand and uh, we have been able to sort of, you know, uh, develop a model which uh, a growing enterprise can easily sort of, you know, approach. Uh, uh, we, we are not looking for one big master franchise for the whole country. Peter uh, Baptiste understand that uh, even doing one uh, territory right in India can can really uh, make a very big difference. So, so so that's the idea behind as Anshul shared that we have kind of you know broken down India into different parts, and we are looking for uh, enterprises, individuals who are influencers who are. Uh, who know their markets and and really uh, do uh, well their specific territories. 
and, and that's why I think, which means that uh, the door kind of becomes open uh, for a lot many enterprises and individuals rather than selected few. And that has been, of course, uh, the goal of Franchise India and, of course, uh, uh, an, an, an uh, effort of Fran Global also to really bring uh, the best brands in the world and make it accessible. So that is actually, actually that's very important that uh, you would be, uh, you have a chance to connect yourself with one of the best brands in the world uh, at a, at a entry sort of a price point of something which uh, is is very accessible to a lot of a lot many people but still maintaining the standardization and standards of the brand Well, and friends, I would request if you have any questions with respect to the location uh, or the city uh, that you come from, please uh, feel free to put that in the Q&A box and we'll take it up on your behalf. Uh, and again, I'd like to thank Baptist and Peter for presenting this opportunity. And like Venus also mentioned, QSR segment is one of the highest growing uh, sub-segments uh, in the overall food and service uh, market. And Mexican food per se is uh, a cuisine or a category, I would say, uh, which is also trending globally and largely a very uh, big untapped market as far as India is concerned. Mexican cuisines uh, also find a very big acceptance among the Indian urban uh, consumers because the offering is, uh, I would say, compatible with the Indian palate. Uh, there are a lot of similarity, uh, similarities uh, between the Indian and the Mexican cuisine, especially the use of spices, uh, ingredient chilies. Uh, they are a very common uh, aspect. And also, I'm sure everybody who's out here has been reading about some of the leading chains coming to India. They're rooting for uh, India becoming uh, their second largest uh, market outside uh, their home market. So that's the opportunity in this category uh, that we see today. Uh, They're offering dynamic uh, formats to suit all locations and audience, uh, uh, catering to uh, all kinds of audience from a casual dine-in quick service to a food court format where the investment uh, can start as low as 55, 56 Lacks. That's your translation for a food court investment and goes up to about uh, one crore uh, for a casual dine-in, which requires 1,500 square feet of space. And uh, coming uh, on, on the average sales, uh, one can expect uh, is uh, about 12 watt lakhs for a food court and a quick service restaurant could be somewhere around 22 watt lakhs. And a casual dine-in can expect somewhere around 25 lakhs of a monthly sales, uh, which can be expected. We're looking for a cluster uh, partner where the opportunity is minimum of 25 clusters each uh, geography that we are looking at. Now, you know, one question which I think a lot of people might also want to understand, we talked about the master fee uh, component. Now, is that master fee for these 25 clusters or that master fee would mean a bigger uh, region uh, apart from that uh, 25 cluster or every 25 cluster you know, uh, calls for a master franchise fee, which we have put uh, across in our presentation. I think so, Sonia, that uh, they, we have identified four different clusters and every cluster would have this uh, $250,000 fee one time. It's a 10 plus 10 year contract, so generally like a 20 year duration. And uh, so this one time fee is uh, for every area master. So collectively in India, we're looking for a million US. All right. And also, I see some questions, you know, which are coming uh, from our audience, starting from Mr. Ajit is looking for Chennai. And I will also pick some of the important markets that you see are uh, potential markets uh, for a category uh, or a brand like this. And uh, I think I see a question from Mr. Yogendra Patil. He's asking on the ROI, which he says he has some questions. And uh, Mr. Patil, I'll encourage you to put these uh, questions in the Q&A box and we'll take that up. But just to clarify for uh, uh, area franchisee or a cluster franchisee, we have uh, uh, three sources, I would say, for uh, revenue. You know, the first source uh, is your revenue uh, from the franchise fee, which comes from sub franchise. So, where a partner gets a percentage of the franchise fees. Uh, the second source of income is also the royalty, which comes from sub franchising. And these are recurring royalties, which every uh, unit has to pay to a area franchisee and third is also typically your project uh, or uh, you know uh, fee or some other uh, supplies uh, which come from an area franchisee to unit franchisee that's also where any area franchisee uh, retains uh, or has a margin so these typically becomes your three 
uh, sources of income. And the ROI uh, again has two uh, aspects here. Uh, one is uh, for a unit franchisee and typical ROI that we have seen in the presentation is about one and a half to two odd years. And uh, for an area franchisee or a cluster franchisee, as we may uh, understand, uh, this depends on the speed of expansion. You know, while your unit franchise or that you would open by yourself uh, would take its own course of getting the ROI over the uh, period of time but on the overall investment of an area franchisee that you make uh, the faster you're able to scale uh, the faster return you get and then you have these recurring incomes by way of uh, royalties uh, and uh, supply that comes as a, a monthly structure so looking at 25 uh, uh, you know cluster uh, with the minimum potential my question is which are the important markets that you consider uh, are important or priority in terms of both potential that we see these 25 clusters coming in uh, we did mention, uh, you know, how we have divided the, the country, but primarily, uh, you know, uh, we would want to first, uh, uh, the way quick service restaurant brands have done, 80% of their development is still in the top uh, five to seven cities. So we would want to emulate that. Uh, so we're looking at, of course, in North India, Delhi, NCR is, is going to be the major uh, hub and region. Of course, you have connectivity to Chandigarh, Punjab. There, of course, there is a very big demand for quick service, but Delhi NCR being the main one. You have Mumbai and Pune uh, as major hubs. Uh, and as satellite, I would say, Ahmedabad. Uh, and then, of course, down south, you have these three big cities, uh, 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 Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Chennai. Uh, uh, so I would say these three hubs would be our our first major sort of target area. We do have a market in Kolkata, Northeast. Uh, so that area is uh, also there. I'm, I'm assuming that development there would be a slightly slower because I think getting location is, is going to be a challenge in that part. So I would say these three hubs are uh, critical for us. And uh, I do feel that that 25 store actually is a minimum development. We can easily, if once the brand scales up, we can easily do 50 stores uh, per region, especially in these three regions as the market moves around because our market is also growing. Right. And friends, if you look at these 25 clusters, these are minimum potential any uh, particular region would have. And uh, the opportunity can be larger, which can be two or three times uh, bigger than what uh, is uh, looked at. I'll request all of you keep putting your questions. Um, and uh, I will also take uh, a question from Mr. Yogendra. He says, I can understand one more thing that what market research have you done and how uh, can uh, how you can, uh, and I think what he's asking is the prospects for the Indian market. So, uh, Peter Baptist or Venus, would you want to comment on that? Uh, Peter Baptist, uh, I mean, you know, I think if uh, I, I let me try and reframe this question. Uh, I think India being a big ma potential market for quick service, it's it's already established, and uh, and and so many sort of uh, you know. Uh, reports are there but from your perspective uh, for otaku since you you actually are the you also operate other quick service restaurant brands and you have built this brand on your own so how would a prospective potential partner should uh, approach that uh, this uh, like you know the why otakus and how would otakus i think if you can give some sort of uh, you know sense on that for our for our audience to kind of you know really ponder on no oh, absolutely um, maybe the the first point on the on the market research and the and the market study. I think it's it's a very legit point because entering the the market, uh, one of the the first things we do is is really doing a deep dive on the on the market and even more important is having the right partners. Uh, so that is something that we do across the the markets in Europe, being it the franchise partners, but also the partners we we team up together with to enter the market and. Also there, I think with, with Franchise India, we have found the exactly right partner to do so um, for the local knowledge on the, on the market. So we're very confident that together uh, we, we find the best way to approach the Indian market. When we look at Otakos as a brand itself, one thing uh, which is making the difference across Europe is the product. And, and the product is something that is, is very, uh, let's say, appealing across Europe with all the different tastes. So Europe is, let's say, uh, much smaller than India, obviously, but it has a lot of diff cultural differences, which might be then again similar to India. If we look at the product, in the end, French fries, the cheese sauce, the meats, the tortilla, it, it's something that appeals from Italy over Germany, obviously in France, where it comes from. 
Uh, and, and that's our, our strength. So the product itself being completely, um, basically people can, can build it the way they like it with all the different flavors. You can go from very spicy to less spicy. In every market, we make some local adjustments uh, to, to make sure that we cover the palate in, in terms of taste. Um, and, and that's the key strength because in the end, everything starts with the product. On the other, on the other side, I think like Dean has indicated, the, the strength of this is that we are, a pretty young company, which is part of a very large group. So we have uh, the experience operating Burger King restaurants. We have uh, very strong and solid partnerships within Europe. We're the biggest uh, operator of QSR in, in Europe. So we know exactly what it takes to operate a business from a supply chain point of view, providing all the support in terms of operations, IT, uh, development. We, we are used to that and, and we have a very strong team. On the other hand, we still keep this entrepreneurial approach. Um, and, and that's, I think, the big plus of, of tacos compared to, for example, the, the Burger Kings that we operate as well. And, and like Dean has indicated, usually they're very big partners. And then you have one master franchise, two master franchisees, which are pretty big established groups. Uh, most of them, like in India, or they, they just did an IPO, they're planning on doing an IPO. And um, what we see with Otakos, and it's, it's one of the big successes also for our franchisees, is that it's a brand that is scaling very quickly, but it's possible to do it through a multi, like a regional franchise agreement, opening around 25 locations with the potential to grow further. So I think that's again, where we have the flexibility, the, the potential of growing further can come from the development within the location, within the area. It can come from developing a, an additional area and all of that together with basically the, the growth of the brand. So I think those three, four things together, a good product, very good local partners, the flexibility on our side to grow, um, let's say a new brand within India, but on the other hand, also having the experience to do similar with, with bigger and, and, and let's say uh, already global brands like BK, um, I believe puts us in a, in a good position uh, to, uh, to enter the Indian uh, market. And also for us, it's, it's a key, key priority. So basically, we will do everything that is required to also give uh, the support to the to the local partners in order to realize this uh, this development, um, and 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 that's kind of how we see it, uh, and also the commitment that we can take on our sides towards our uh, Indian partners. Very well put, uh, Peter, and I would also uh, maybe you know, uh, add on to that and uh, to the question which is asked by Mr. Yogender. So first and foremost, like Peter mentioned, is the market acceptance that we understand how uh, the food is accepted in the Indian market and some of the leading uh, players, how they are actually performing in the market. Uh, second is the product uh, and the offering uh, which the company has standardized through their supply chain and also their own experience of uh, working in diverse markets. And third, which I would say is very important is the choice of partners and especially for any international brand, the choice of an Indian partner or any partner in any country is uh, very, very critical because they are uh, the ears, they are the face of uh, the brand and they in fact uh, take on the entire responsibility uh, which uh, perhaps uh, the parent has to do so that's very important and lastly like i mentioned is also the scalability which is extremely critical uh, so fast scalability is uh, one aspect which makes uh, any brand uh, successful and especially in the first two years while your target might be staggered for a period of say five years and your agreement term typically is about 10 odd years so you have an opportunity to add every year but the first uh, i would say two odd years are very very critical uh, for uh, the success of the brand and ideally you know you should be able to achieve anything between 70 to 80 percent of your target uh, the minimum potential target uh, in the first two years and then you have a uh, uh, effect uh, you know which is uh, multiple effect of the success uh, which the brand uh, achieves uh, through the uh, outlets which are sub-franchised. Now my question uh, next would be we talked about uh, uh, the unit uh, franchise and the area franchise. Would you want to comment at this point in time or do you think you want to uh, maybe you know keep the discussion one-to-one -one with the prospective partners? This was a little bit on the sharing. So while we understand broadly what is the sharing between uh, and what streams uh, including franchise fees, royalties are shared between the unit and the area franchisee. Would you want to share uh, maybe a percentage of uh, uh, that sharing, you know, how much of the area franchise shares with the unit franchise, the royalties and the franchise fees? 
So I think like like you indicated, the, the concept is, is the is the most important one where um, the, there's a share in terms of, of royalties um, and, and a potential opening fees with the what we call the junior franchisees. Um, in terms of, of the exact numbers, um, there's also for us kind of a range because in the end it also depends. And again, it's, it's some flexibility for our, our partners to decide somebody who has a region with 25 locations, let's say somebody who is willing to, to open 10 locations, uh, probably the, the, the split uh, and, and the percentage that this uh, junior franchisee would have to pay would be a bit lower. So a lower split for the regional franchisee than somebody who opens one location. So also there, obviously, with the with the six percent, there's there's room for for a uh, for an important uh, let's say split with our with our partner, uh, but it depends a bit on the on the time by time location. But overall, it's it's uh, it's in line with uh, with what you can expect from from uh, from this type of business, and also maybe there uh, for for um, the valuation for our partners, especially with people uh, who start within the regional franchise uh, development, maybe some people who already operate some some existing and uh, operate already some restaurants as an operator. Um, it's worth having a, a closer look at uh, the valuations of those master franchise or regional franchise uh, businesses, uh, because they come with, with very attractive also valuations for, for their business operators as well. Uh, so that is something that uh, we definitely can go into more details over a separate call if, if people are interested, uh, but it's it's worth looking into. That's very helpful, Peter. And I would uh, also like to make a very special mention because it is an India entry opportunity that we're looking at. Uh, so the choice of partner is of paramount importance uh, uh, to the company. And uh, the company will also follow a very structured and a very stringent uh, process of onboarding uh, their uh, initial partners. Uh, Peter, would you want to comment on the profile of uh, people uh, or prospective partners uh, or maybe any qualifying criteria that you feel is uh, important uh, aspect uh, to be considered yeah um so for for the type of partners we're looking for uh one thing which is very important it, it, it's entrepreneurs so it, it's people who have already launched a first uh, successful business uh, can be in the restaurant industry but can also be uh in another industry what we see is that um both can work as long as there's a dedicated team. So we have people who are already very good operators. They have some, uh, some locations and they're ready for the next step and ready for the next step, uh, developing, uh, let's say a strong brand like Otakos in a region, allowing you to have junior franchisees. It is for a lot of franchisees, uh, a very nice next step in their, in their development as an entrepreneur. Uh, we also have the other, um, the other profile, let's say. So that's people who already had some, some businesses who have the financial means to set in, to put in place a team. And, and that's in the end what is crucial. So we can have the investor, we can have the operator, but it's the team that is very important uh, with a very strong knowledge of the local market because we see that uh, on our side, we, we provide the framework. So in terms of marketing, operations, supply chain, uh, th there's a very strong support. But in the end, it's very important to have a person who knows the local market, who with, with who we can really discuss, okay, what is the best approach for the type of locations? What is the opening strategy? How do we gonna address the marketing? Some of these uh, areas have all of them have their specificity. So having a strong entrepreneur with a first experience, with a good understanding of the market is basically what we need. Everything else uh, is something that we can provide on, on our side from training, supply, IT, uh, the referencing of, of the equipment and, and all of that. So having a, a strong entrepreneur with, um, the energy and most of all the ambition because this is the type of project we need ambitious people we need people who say okay i want to go for 25 locations and basically once the four or five first locations are open we need to start discussing okay what's the what's the next step how are we going to take it to the next level uh, and that's the type of profiles that fit well very well within uh, otakos uh, it's also the type of profile that we saw within within europe people that have this ambition have this energy once the results uh, are there for the restaurants, they can scale up very quickly. And um, I think if, if those elements are there, it's a, it's a great fit for us and uh, could be a very nice opportunity also for the franchisee. Peter, I, I second that and very aptly put by you. And that's the most important uh, aspect for selection of a partner, especially in a food business, which requires uh, hands-on operators and not just pure investors. And before we close, uh, Vinesh, I'll request if there are any questions that you think uh, you would want to take up uh, and also request if we can have uh, maybe further closing remarks uh, from the entire team and yourself. Yeah. 
Sure. Well, no, thank you so much, Sonia. This was a great discussion. I think we covered uh, quite a bit, uh, and uh, I hope this would help uh, for people uh, who are listening now or later to kind of give a sense on what the brand and the business is about. Uh, and the next step would be in case you are interested uh, to know more, reach out to us. I put in my information. You have franchise and information also. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us and we can can have a chat that if this would uh, be something which uh, can be pursued further on your behalf. And uh, uh, I, I want to thank Peter and Baptiste. I think uh, uh, we have worked closely with both of them in last couple of months to really put together uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this go-to-market strategy and model. And I have to thank them because they have been very open uh, uh, and, uh, and kind of really to really understand uh, uh, the, the unit economics of India. And uh, uh, and accordingly, the strategy has been sort of there. And of course, as as they mentioned, as Peter has mentioned, uh, the 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 flavor and the 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 DNA of the brand is that they want to partner with people uh, who uh, you not you, you don't need to have food experience. If you do, that's great. But if you don't, but you do need uh, to have a lot more uh, appetite to be uh, to be aggressive, to be able to. Uh, uh, deliver on the rollout because this business is not about you investing three, four, five crores and opening two stores. It, this business is about, as I as as we mentioned, uh, you know, scalability. You need to bring in numbers. Uh, if you don't have a food experience, the brand would really work with you to enable you uh, uh, to uh, be able to make you a good, profitable, sustainable food organization that, that they can do. But you have to be open. You have to know that this business would only work if you put up the right team and if you bring in you open the right locations and then you actually uh, build economies of scale because quick service restaurant business is all about supply chain and location, frankly speaking. And Otakos has, of course, figured that out in Europe. In India, they would be working with the potential partner or, or the prospective partner to put this together. So uh, again, thank you so much, uh, 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 everyone who has spent uh, time with us and we look forward to hear back. Baptiste, Peter, anything to add? No, 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 not anything to add. Uh, once again, thank you very much as well to have received us. I think it's important to, to show uh, the potential of the brand and uh, what we can achieve together. And as uh, Venice said, uh, please contact her if you need any further detail. We would be happy to, to dive into numbers, to dive into uh, the location, to dive into everything together. So please feel free. We were really dedicated to the Indian market and uh, we'll make time for everyone. Thank you, Baptiste. Thank you. Thank you so much, Baptiste. And Bye. I'm you if you want to put your numbers also in the chat box and the email ID for our uh, investors and the audience to reach out to your uh, team for further discussion. I've done that. And uh, Ashna, I request you to kindly take it over from here. So thank you so much, our panel member, for joining uh, today for this particular webinar. Be there to talk about this great opportunity. Dear friends, thank you so much for the registration joining us today. Please do reach out to us at our business hotline number, which is 9717683838. Please share your valuable suggestion and feedback with us. We are also available at different social handles. We are available at Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Your input will definitely help us in improving better. And if you want to get more guidance, more input, more industry insights from the management team of Franchise India, it's very easy to get it. Just join Gaurav Sir and Sonia Ma'am at their LinkedIn platform. Link we have just shared with you. So please join them at the LinkedIn platform. And tomorrow under our 12 p.m. webinar series, we are inviting you to join us for the journey of Pooja. It's an eco-friendly and energy-saving uh, retail opportunity for distribution opportunity for all of you. So please do registration either by connecting us at the business hotline number or go to Facebook page where we have shared the registration link. Thank you so much once again for joining in today. Have a safe day ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you, everyone.